Hello everyone. What we're going to do is make a little coffee scoop. As the English refer to them as caddy spoons. It fits in your canister or caddy. Uh, it can be a little tea scoop or I guess you could use it for sugar or whatever. But they are really uh, neat looking little uh, scoops. And uh, what we're going to do is I'll show you the tools we're going to use to make this. And you can't just go out and make one. You have to kind of set up to make several. And one reason for that is I make them and I can't keep them. All my friends want them. Uh, I, you know, people, you just, they want them. They're really cool. But what we do is just take a, I, I use cherry. That's just some air dried cherry. And uh, start off, make a cylinder, put a tenon on it. These are about two and a quarter or so, about five inches long. And <clears throat> when we get through turning it, it'll look like that. Look like a little trailer hitch. And once we get it into that shape off the lathe, then we'll put it in the jig where we can bandsaw it in two. And <clears throat> one thing I do when I'm making these, you can see the grain pattern. And you'd like to have that in the bottom of the scoop. Really makes it look a lot better than just willy-nilly any direction. So I'll try to mark that before I put it in this uh, little jig I made. Uh, this It's very unsafe to try to just cut this freehand. I've done it in the past, but if you're gonna make several, spend the time, get you some scrap wood nail it together, glue it together, then I just mix up some Bondo. And you just make, mix up uh, enough to fill this in pretty much. And what I do after I have one made, I'll, I'll coat this with oil. I use this Howard's uh, finish here, it's just beeswax and oil. But you mix this up with a hardener in it, put it in there, then you just mash it down in there. And this stuff really sets up quickly. <laughs> you don't want to wait too long. And uh, once you push it in there, and then you have a pattern, you can just uh, put them in there, take it to the bandsaw and, <clears throat> and cut it. And it's nice and quick and easy. You just eyeball it and you make a little curve on it when you're bandsawing it. It saves you a lot of sanding. And once we get those cut, we can uh, then put it in our, uh, in our chuck to hollow it out. Here's one I just started. I didn't finish hollowing it out. <clears throat> but uh, you can take flat jaws and make your own wooden jaws to screw onto them. And uh, I know uh, one way has them for the talon uh, chucks and the stronghold. But anyway, make your wooden jaws and then you can cut them out with a, once you put them on there, leave a little gap there where you can close it down. And I make a little notch in there where this fits right in there. This is an old set of uh, wooden jaws I've had for years. But once you put it in there, you can tighten it up. Got to get it straight, though. <clears throat> and then you can put it on the lathe and hollow this out. <clears throat> but first I use a, uh, it's just a metal working drill bit. <clears throat> and, you know, you can use a, a tail stock and put it in there. This is quick and simple. Um, it's very uh, safe to use it like this. There's not a lot of resistance. But once you get your depth, then you can take a like a 3 8 spindle gouge and, uh, and just hollow that thing out nice and round. And once we get it out of the chuck, 
Then we take it over to our sander. <clears throat> and I made this, uh, it's just a block of wood. It's about 12 inches by three inches, close to that. And on the end of it, it's a flat disc with the 120, 120 grit paper in there. But it's got the backup pads in there where it really does a good job and lasts a long time. And on the, once you get the wood cut round, <clears throat> drill that quarter inch hole in it. It's just a friction fit. You put it between centers. And then you can sand this with the 36 grit or 80 grit and you shape it. Then you can sand it on the next uh, sand uh, the grit down. And this is like 320 over here on this side. Once you get those three, then you can do the edges of that. And I'll demonstrate how to do that. But <clears throat> what I did to make this, that's just a mouse pad, a computer mouse pad that uh, I glued on there with uh, spray adhesive. Uh, but first thing you got to do is cut a groove in it, in a parallel groove that's straight. And then you can run your sandpaper in there. I made little wooden wedges to hold it in place. But uh, anyway, it works great. And for the sandpaper, you can use uh, just uh, belt sander paper that's uh, three inches wide, or you can get the four inch and cut it in two, make them uh, two inches or three inches, however you, I think the three inch works better. You got more room to work and it'll last longer. So that's the key to it. I wouldn't try to make several of those unless you had this made and you can use this on all kind of projects uh, on wood, wood turning. Here's the uh, the box, I've, I've got these, uh, received these in. And there's different brands, you get online and find them. They're, you know, probably around $15 a piece for these. But it's well worth it. <clears throat> and once we, uh, while we're t getting this round on the lathe, because it needs to be a complete sphere, uh, you can do it as good as you possibly can by eye, and then I take a, uh, that's just a two inch hole saw bit, and I ground the teeth off, and I, while that's turning, you can put it up there, and do it, it'll make it completely round, because that don't look very good unless they're completely round. And to sharpen that, I'll just take a diamond home, that's a Avalon Laser diamond hone, and just go across the top of it. It'll make a little burr, and that's a pretty good cutting edge right there. Now, Phil Irons in England uh, did a demo where I, I'm kind of redoing his in the way I do it, but he he had a hole saw like this made out of high speed steel and I tried to get one but they just don't make it anymore his was probably 25 years old but anyway these will work it helps you to uh, get a nice round spoon and once I put this on the lathe I made a little sizing tool where I'll know it's the right size then I made a little notch on it where I can know how long to make it. Because it's very easy, if you make the handles too long, they don't go in the canister very well. So anyway, that, you know, you could make one of these out of plywood or whatever, but have a little piece of scrap loom. So now, what we'll do is go to the lathe, and I'll turn one, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, we're gonna take our little cherry block here, about five inches long. Put it in the chuck here. <clears throat> you 
we we'll bring the tailstock up. I always bring the tailstock up for safety reasons. It'll help support that. <clears throat> this is already at least round, but we've got to uh, size it. And what I'll use is a bedan to size that. Here's our little gauge. It's about two inches here. We know the size of it, then we'll get a roughing gouge <clears throat> and bring it all down to that two inch diameter. Take a little sizing tool, just the length of it, there are little points here. Just touch it to it. And I made these points a little bit long. I, I'm really going to cut it just a little fraction shorter. I'll take my bedan. Take our little gauge again. <clears throat> this is the exact diameter of that. We don't want to go to the exact diameter because it, it's not a complete circle. We have a handle there. So we're going to bring it back about a, uh, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. A little shorter there. <clears throat> We'll make a little sizing cut here with our banana. Now we know the center of this is right in that area. It's like a half inch spindle gouge. And I found the best way to do it, just do some 45. Then that way at least the corners are knocked off. And you don't want to start right here and You'll uh, make it too small if you start cutting right there on the line. So Just keep raising the handle up, going around the corner.
You just gotta look at the top, the profile. You're just trying to get a nice, as close to the sphere as you can. I'm going to pull this tail stuck out of the way. <clears throat> then shut this end of it. start here and you just keep, you have to continually bring that handle up to follow that curve. The more of these that you do, the better you get. And it takes a little practice. I haven't done this in a while. Once you get, you know, that's pretty rough right there, but we're going to fix that. <clears throat> With a little hole saw. Move just a little bit more down here. Pretty, looks pretty good. We can go ahead and sand that. Well, let's go ahead and we can turn turn this part of the handle, get it headed the right direction, and we can sand it. Okay. I lost my. Okay. What you want to do is have this the end of the handle a little smaller than the sphere. So we'll bring it down just a little bit. Still just a little bit.
bigger than I want it. Bring it down a little bit. Take a bedan. What you want to do is put a chamfer right on the end of it. Looks pretty good. Come back to our sphere. Come right on down. Like on any cove, you come from one side and back from the other. If these handles aren't shaped right, the whole thing it just doesn't look right. Notice how I've got the tool up against my body, and I'm using my whole body to stabilize that. this just a little bit better. Okay. <clears throat> Clean this up just a little bit. Shadow there. bit of a ridge there. I think we can get that out without any problem. We'll go ahead and sand this. We'll start off with uh, 180. Yeah, you want that uh, cove, you don't want any flat spots or high spots on it. Just I mean, if you got to start off with 100 or whatever paper you need to get it the right shape, do it. Nobody knows what size what grit paper you use, it doesn't really matter. As long as it looks good, you get through with it. I've seen a lot of people start off with uh, too fine a grit, and it's real slick on the outside, but there's scratches all in it. So it's better to get a coarser grit to start with. I 
temperature 180. We'll go up to 220. Got a little 320. Then we go <clears throat> to some 400. Yeah, if they're not sanded good, they, they just don't, they don't look good. If they're not sanded up to about 400. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we can part that off. I'll just use an eighth inch parting tool. <clears throat> And you, if you angle it in a little bit, it'll save you some sand and time. Might make a little relief cut. trailer ball hitch <laughs> well, now we can go over and, and uh, put it in our jig and bandsaw it <clears throat> 